Subject for today is something a little bit different. It's this uh, jukebox mechanism and it's from the good old days of vinyl and when vinyl records were, a selection of vinyl records were played mechanically by a mechanism just like this. The problem with this one is that the windings have melted on the motor. So the windings have melted into all the plastic supports, the bobbins that they sit on. So I'm going to have a look and see if I can take the motor to pieces, rewind the coils, put everything back together, get it back in the mechanism and get it running. Today I'm going to attempt to strip this, this schematic motor. This one is from one of the Black Jarrow Vex machines and it's overheated. You can see that these end cheeks are very badly melted. So I'm going to see if I can first of all strip it and if I can strip it take out these coils and maybe see if there's something I can do to to repair that would be really good. So that's all the rotating part of the motor. It looks to me as though this may be held together by these can you see these small rods? I may be able to remove the pole pieces that pass through the center of these coils. I've set the motor up on this workbench here. I'm going to attempt to drive those pins through. All four of those pins are now on the move. Just need to try and get them the rest of the way. And now hopefully I can remove the coil. Yeah. If I can take if I can take this plastic bobbin off the pole piece, maybe I can rewind it and make the motor work again. I'm back here at my bench now. The first thing I'll do, in fact, is to just reassemble some of these fixings. So with those parts stored safely, I'll just have a look and see what's involved with, in fact, this one's already moved, see what's involved with taking this pole piece out. Now these look like they're handed, so they have two kind of rib details and they're both different. It may be quite important to get these the right way around. Yeah, so I've taken a couple of still photos so I can see which round everything goes. And I've just got to, oh, this is loose. I've just got to push this out. This pole piece will come out. So they're loose, they're just not coming out because the original motor coil, oh, this one is, the original motor coil is melted. Now these coils are both detach from their pole pieces. So all I need to do is strip the wire off of these because I have to count how many turns each has, figure out the wire diameter, get some more wire, make some more bobbins, some formers for the wire to wind on, wind them up, put it back together and hopefully I've got a running motor again. Yeah, so these Formers are in quite poor shape. I need to try and preserve as much of that as possible. But what I first of all do is to see if I can remove this yellow tape from the outside. With that piece of tape off, I can disconnect this wire termination. As I say, try and keep as much of that plastic there as possible. So you can see this wire comes from the centre of the coil. Here's the other termination wire just here. Oh, and even this must have got very hot because the insulation on this wire is all melted as well. So it's going to need some new wire too. It's not the end of the world, I'm sure. And now it's just the process. of unwinding the coil and counting how many turns there are in the process. So if I keep my finger here that will be one, two, seven, 
18, 7, 19, 7, 20, 7, 21, 7, 22, 7, 23, 7, 24, 7, 25, 7, 20, 7, 25. 725 turns. You don't want to see the copper wire. There's copper wire everywhere. So 725 turns. I should write that down straight away. Now I'm going to do a little bit of measurement. So uh, let's check the wire gauge first of all. And that is 0.3 of a millimeter. So wire is 0 0.30 millimeters. So I can work out which gauge to get. Then I need to check the size of this. So if I do a quick sketch of that, it's rectangular, it's not square. So if I draw that with a rectangular hole in the center, exaggerated slightly. I'll try and keep this core in one piece if I can as a reference though. So now I've got all my sizes, I just need to get some wire and find a way to make two new cores to put the wire on. Today I'm going to have a look at making some replacements for the bobbins on the motor. First thing to do I suppose is probably just to check my sketch that I've got here. I was just going to check this internal size and see how that looks. And now what I need to do is to draw up the component bits of the bobbin and I'm going to cut them out in paper, stick them together and see how that works. I'm going to flip over to the computer now, design up some pieces that will make a bobbin in paper. It's easiest for me to make these on the computer so I'm just going to sketch these up uh, using Coral Draw and First thing I'm going to do, I think, is make the rectangular end cheeks. Now the next bit will be the wrap that goes around the inside. So here's my printout, all ready to go. We just need to cut out these shapes and then I'm gonna assemble a paper bobbin and see how that looks. I reckon that looks pretty good. Well, it will if it fits. Uh, where's my metal piece? That would fit over the metal piece like this. Yeah, I think that could work. What I need to do now is make use that same pattern and make a bobbin out of the correct insulating paper that will insulate the wire from the metal. We'll maybe take a quick look at the bits I've got to do this job now. This is the wire. It's fairly straightforward. It's just enameled, enameled copper wire. So the enamel on it provide the insulation so that the windings don't short out. I've got it from this company, brocot.co.uk and they also supplied this which is the insulating paper this is no max whoa and yeah no max which is 
uh, special insulating paper, which I'll make new former out of that. And then that will insulate the wire from the metal underneath. Just put, putting the wire to one side for a minute, I think my next challenge is probably to make the bobbin. And I'm not really sure how to do this. I can either print it on paper and stick it on, or I might even be able to put this through the printer. So I'm gonna have a go at that. I'm gonna see if I can print on it. That would be much easier. Well, that apparently worked. All I need to do now is cut these pieces out of the Nomex and I'm on my way towards making my bobbin. Here's those three pieces and uh, so I've got a top and a bottom and obviously the piece that wraps around in the middle. It's all looking good. This will all go together just the same as my paper one. And the only problem I've got is that it's a little bit banana shaped. What I'm planning to do, don't know whether it will work, what I'm planning to do is to cut another pair so that these will and stick these together and then hopefully the bends will cancel out and I'll have some nice flat end cheeks. I'm going to need another, I've got another one of these to cut out and then I'll cut another six of these and then I can make two bobbins with the ends glued together. Here I am at the next stage. I've now got them to just exactly the shape I want them. These end cheeks are quite nice and flat. Well they're probably as flat as I could hope for. I've got it so I can join all the components of my bobbins together. I suppose the next stage is just to glue the bobbins together and then think about how I'm going to wind the wire. That's got these glued into shape. The next thing I need to do is to glue and glue the end cheeks to those which shouldn't be too challenging. That's it, my two bobbins are made. I'm actually pretty happy with how these look, all glued together. But uh, now the challenge is to get 725 turns of this wire onto each of these. We'll have to see how that goes. I've trimmed up the bobbins and I've drilled some holes for the wires to go through. So they're all set and I've got a plan for getting the wire on. I've made these, to have 3D printed two discs. I'm going to use these discs to clamp the bobbins. So I'll, I'll clamp and take the bobbins between the discs. Uh, yeah, I've got some tape here. So I'll clamp and take the bobbins between the discs and then I'll put a bolt through the middle. So something like this. Oh, apart from the hole's too small, but hey, it needs a bigger hole. And then I'll clamp them up and I'll put the end of the bolt in the drill get the bobbin spinning and then 725 turns later the job's done. Not quite sure I'm going to count those. I'm going to try and count them, just count them, but if I have to do it electronically I'll make a little circuit to count them. So now I can put this in the drill spin it and wind the wire on counting how many turns I'm getting. This is my core winding machine. I've got wire on a spindle, so that's on this workbench. I've got my winding machine, which is a drill, and that's on this bench. There's the bobbin I'm gonna wind on with two end cheeks, which I 3D printed. And then there's a bit of tape on here so I can count how often it goes round. I've also got a pencil and a bit of cardboard. So if I get bored and I need to stop, I can write down how many times it's gone round and then pick it up again. I think I'm going to need to tension this. In fact, I think I'm going to need to line this up slightly better. Go for it.
Okay, that's a hundred. And it's looking pretty good. Seven hundred and twenty five coils done. So I'm just going to cut cut the wire. Let's put some tape on this so it doesn't fly off. Cut the wire and take a look at it. That is looking pretty convincing to me. I've got a great coil wound on my former. I'm just going to need to tape this up to keep the windings in place. But it's looking pretty good. So I've just got to wind another one. And then I've got to join the wires together, so I need to put some lead out wires on this, which is what these holes are for. Put some lead out wires on it, join them up, and give it a test. It's looking good. So time for a quick catch up on this project. I've got my original frame for the motor with the pole pieces and the old melted coils. I took out the rotating parts from here and then removed the coils, and then I took the wire off. Counted the number of turns on the bobbins, made some new bobbins, wound the wire on. So I've now got two new coils which I can put on these pole pieces, put them back into the frame, fit the rotating part in and hopefully everything will work. What I do need to do is varnish and insulate these windings to make them safe and I won't be doing that just yet because I want to check that the motor runs okay with these coils. So I'm gonna do a very rough assembly of the motor now with the coils in to make sure I've got everything up the right way. I have got another motor here, which is a good one, and that is a reference for me to make sure I get the coils the right way around and wired up correctly. This one is still completely wired. Starting with getting this round the right way is a good idea. So I've got my reference motor here and that says wires this way. So I've got these two round the same way. These pole pieces are slightly different. That one goes at the bottom. So I've got wires this side. That will then go through that so that the wires are exiting underneath and then this can load into here like this. This one we'll have that copper piece facing that way. Again, there'll be wires to this side. So that fits through there that way. No, that will fit through there that way with the wire exit on the top. That's the two pole pieces and coils in place. Now I need to keep them stable while I'm testing it. What I'll do is just drive these securing pins in slightly if that makes sense i'm just going to put them in i'm not going to fully load them because this will all be coming back out in a minute to be insulated hopefully that's fixed the pole pieces temporarily while i test it i've got all the wires coming out this side now I just need to fit the rotor and figure out which way around the wiring will go. That's the rotor fixed now and it's starting to look much more like a motor. It's spinning which is great and I'm going to move on now to complete the wiring. So if I get the wiring set up for a very brief test with power just so that I can be sure that these coils are wound correctly and everything's working. And then I can terminate these wires and finish the job. Now there is only one way that these can be wired. So what I've done is just used this fully wired example to show me how the wires go between the coils. I've got a sketch of that so I can wire this one up in the same way. And the other thing I've just done as well is to make a grounding lead. So power's connected, my hands are all clear, the frame is grounded just in case anything went wrong. The wires are completely dressed away from the frame and uh, ready to hit the power I think. And yes it turns. That's up to 40% of 240 so that's probably 
the normal working voltage. It's spinning and looking really good. Fantastic. So now the next stage will be uh, strip it all back down again basically. So I'll disconnect this, I'll take the coils out, I'll varnish them to seal the windings in, I'll take them up to make them insulated, I'll also take these lead outs and terminate them with some of this wire properly and put that underneath the, the tape and when that's done I'll have a fully working and rewound motor. So here are my two coils, I've taken them back out of the motor and in the meantime I've varnished them with some varnish that I got from Brocots, my friends who do the transformer things. I took one look at the data sheet for this stuff, it looks pretty dodgy so I actually took it outside and put gloves on and did all that so that's done and they've dried. Now the next job is to insulate them with some of this special tape. This tape is supplied for insulating windings and I'll use this to wrap around the windings and also to wrap around the lead out wires. So I'm going to put a few turns of this around next. So that's the two coils wrapped in the special electrical tape. Now what I'm going to do is terminate them with some of this some of this wire as before. And that's my first coil finished. Now all I need to do is to remember which way around this is wound and mark these wires up so I know which way they go. So I'm going to mark start and finish on the former. So an update to where I am. I've got both of these coils terminated and both of them are completely insulated now with tape. So I've got my termination wires here. I've marked the inner and the outer ends on there. I've also marked the inner ends on the wire here. From my point of view, I think it's uh, final assembly. Time for one final check. I've got the coils with their insulating tape and these, if you remember, were varnished inside as well. The lead outs are done. There's insulation over the lead outs. I've just staked these pole pieces in lightly so I can test it. I've grounded, as before, I've grounded the frame for safety. I've joined the two central parts on my circuit here and then I've got my live and neutral feeds and if that turns which it does I can put some power on it and sure enough that's running. Now I can be sure which way around these coils go. I've got the correct rotation which is anti-clockwise and all, I, all I've got left to do is to just drive these pins in and properly secure the pole pieces in place and my motor's done. Here I am at the end of the project. I've got my coils nicely insulated. Uh, they're all varnished up. I've got everything reassembled nicely. I've got the pole pieces all staked back in, the motor's in one piece and it still, and it still runs perfectly. Uh, which is great, no noises, it's turning in the correct direction, everything's great, it's ready to go back into place and run just as it did before it melted down. And just before I finish, quick caution, never ever attempt a project like this if you're not 100% trained in working with mains electricity. Mains electricity of course is very dangerous, you should never attempt anything unless you understand the requirements for insulation and safety, not just for when you're working on it but for when the project is finished really pleased with the outcome of the project. I've got the motor back installed in the mechanism now. It's running, the mechanism spins fine, the motor's running at the right speed and I'll zoom in and do a little close-up of it working so you can see exactly what it does when it runs. So those of you who haven't seen one before this is a vinyl record and the mechanism would normally pick one of these up from a rack of records and load it up. Clearly I haven't got the rack here, but this is, this is exactly what it would do. And then it spins in place a record, 
play all the way through the record, the pickup arm's just here, we'll get to the end of the record, it would unload again just like this, put it back in the rack. So I hope you enjoyed my video, if you did, press like, and don't forget, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll keep uploading interesting restorations, repairs, service videos as they come up.